Hello all, welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you a demo of how we can go about solving one of our DevSecOps labs. So if you log into Pentester Academy, you would notice that a couple of new labs have been posted on insecure Docker registry. So let's click on them. And this will take us to the attack defense lab page. Of course, you can log in directly to attack defense uh, go all the way down and click on DevSecOps and then on Docker Registry uh, to go ahead and see the list of labs that we are adding. Let's actually go back to the first one. So let's start this exercise. Now, as we know, the Docker Registry is probably the most important, uh, you know, uh, server when it comes to creating a Docker environment. So this is the server which goes ahead and holds all the images uh, which are then pulled by you know, other servers and then containers get created. Now, unfortunately, the Docker registry most of the time may remain unprotected depending on how people have architected the environment. So in this lab, what we're going to do is, uh, if you kind of read the mission, an unprotected private Docker registry is on the same network as your Kali machine. There are some Docker images present in the registry. The flag is hidden in the name of one of the images. Uh, interact with the private Docker registry using curl and retrieve the flag. No Docker clients are currently provided. Okay, so which means we are going to have to attack this by first principles. Now I've already launched the lab. Here it is. Increase the font a bit. And now let me look at my IP address. So if you notice, you already mentioned that the target's IP address is going to be 192xy3, where x and y are uh, the random addresses assigned to you. So every single time you start a lab, you know, these addresses are randomly created. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a simple nmap scan on that IP. And let's see what happens. So the idea here would be first to see if Nmap itself can go ahead and fingerprint uh, the Docker registry. And after that, we look at how we can go about interacting with the registry. Now, while the Nmap scan is running, I uh, wanted to just quickly show you the documentation of the Docker registry API. So it's actually a very simple HTTP API. They had version one, unfortunately, which they've discontinued because of various limitations and problems and the latest version of the API is v2. Now, this is again a very simple API. It's very comprehensively documented. I'm going to actually come down to the place where there's a good summary of the different URLs and what we can do with it. Here we go. Okay, so let's see if our Nmap scan is done. Fantastic. So Nmap by itself seems to have detected the Docker registry tells us uh, this is on port 5000 and here is the Docker registry, API version is two, great. So now let's actually look at what we would like to do. Now the first thing of course I want to do is look at the list of repositories available in this unprotected Docker registry. So let's scroll down. And if you notice there is a get method where it says if we hit slash v2 slash underscore catalog, uh, this would go ahead and retrieve a sorted JSON list of repositories available in the registry, okay. So if we go back in here, I'm just gonna use curl HTTP. Uh, let's then go ahead, put in the IP address, which is 192.27.183. Dot three, then after that we have 5000, and then we have this URL. Okay, something got activated. Fantastic. So if you notice, we get back a JSON as predicted with the list of repositories which are Alpine, Flag, and Ubuntu. Great. So now that we have the list of repositories, let's understand how we can look at the tags in each of the repositories, right? As we know, each of these tags itself, repo colon tag, you know, corresponds to uh, an image. 
right? So let's go back. And if you notice to fetch the tags identified by name, it's very simply slash V2 given the name here, tags and list. So if I were to go back here, all we'd have to do is V2 give the name. So let's say we can see one of the repo names is Alpine. And then after that tags and list. Great. So in Alpine, we see the tag available is latest, which is the latest image. Similarly, we could go ahead and do Ubuntu. Now Ubuntu seems to have a couple of versions in there, 14 or 4, 18, 12, 16. And then finally, let's actually go ahead and see what is inside our flag repository. So we can see there's only one tag with this value, which clearly is the flag. So if you go back here, verify flags, put that in. There you go. We verified the flag. You know, refresh the page. Great. So if you've noticed, we've gone ahead and solved this via basic principles. There was no need for any Docker client. And to be honest, in many post exploitation cases where let's say, you've gone ahead and successfully broken into a network and probably you know you're in one of the internal systems where docker client isn't available and you've uncovered an internal repository in the dev environment then just by these first principles you would be able to uh, go ahead and uncover a lot of info and that is what in this entire series of devsecops we are going to try to do is attack things via first principle of course, looking at this, this clearly is a very simple case of Python automation as well. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start Python and we'd like to make URL requests. Now, very simple to use library is the Python requests library, which is what I'm going to use here right now. Extremely easy to use this request.get, get the URL, and then you get a response. And then response.content contains basically the data. So here it is, response.content contains the data. So armed with this, let's actually just quickly automate. So I'm going to do an import requests. And actually let's go ahead and yeah. And then after that, I'm going to import JSON because we are getting back a JSON object. We want to convert that into a dictionary for quick automation. So now the first thing is I'm going to go ahead and fetch the list of all the repos, right? So I'm going to do for repo in, and then we can do a quick json.loads and we can do requests.get. So here is where we paste in the initial URL for the catalog. Now, once we get a response for request.get, I'm not doing a lot of error checking, you can if you want to make this into a full-fledged script later. Then the response dot content is what contains the content, right? So which means dot content. Now all of this inside json.loads. So what will happen is json.loads will convert uh, this json object into a dictionary. Now inside that dictionary, we actually know repositories is what is going to hold the list of repositories. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy this out and create. So if I were to just do a print repo, oops, oh, my bad, it's a simple typo in here. We get the list of repos. Now the next step is for each of these repos, we want to go ahead and print all the tags. So again, the very simple automation. What we'll do is now we'll say for tag in, and then we are once again going to go ahead and paste this 
because for every repo we are going to go ahead and fetch the tags right so after that we need to give the repo name so which is our EPO and then let's go ahead and complete the remaining part which is slash tag slash list and then dot content so now we've closed json.loads and inside that content we know that tags is going to contain the list of tags so tags okay it's a long line so i hope there are no there are no i'm saying <laughs> there are no typos i was going to say tags so print repo comma tag okay i'm just hoping there are no typos in here and there you go right so we see alpine has one tag latest flag has this other tag and then ubuntu has these four tags fantastic so as you can imagine you can basically create these simple shortcuts and your own scripts for automation and doing some kind of an os int once you discover a registry right cool so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have, please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.